matching games, you will need a set of alphabet cards and also a set of the friend cards. Make sure you have at least two of each, so two of each letter, and then also two of each friend. The first level is simply to mix up the cards face up and have your child match the letter to the friend. So if I were to mix these up on the floor or on the table, Games and activity time is a great time to get up off the bench and either sit on the floor, sit at the table, use the bench as the table, let those little legs move so that we're not sitting at the piano the whole time. It's also a fun time to invite and involve other members of the family if that works. And most of the games you can also bring in other siblings or younger siblings since they do have the colors and the friends. They might not understand what's happening in the music, but they can feel like they can play the game or do the activity. And if the student has to explain what color each of the friend is or what the name is to maybe the parent who's not doing piano with your child or to somebody else in the family, it's a wonderful opportunity for them to review what they're learning and you get to hear how much of it they actually understand and if there's anything that you need to review. So for this first level, you're just going to mix them up on the floor or on the table and let your child find the matches and find the pairs. So they could take Elena, the electric eel, and match it with the letter E and just set the match off to the side. And then they could find Dee Dee the dinosaur, match it to the letter D, make that match, keep going until they have all of the matches made. If you want to make this more challenging, then the next level is you're going to mix all of the cards up again, but this time you're going to flip them upside down and set them in rows. So basically we're going to play memory. So if you've ever played memory as a child or as an adult, same game, you can decide on the rules if there's a way that you always played it. I'm gonna show you just a couple options here. So I laid these out in the grid, and basically players take turns getting to flip over two cards, and you're trying to find a match. So I can flip this one over, and I have E, and I'm going to flip over one more, and D. These don't match, so I'm going to flip them back over. And then the next person gets to go, and they get to flip two more over. So they're going to flip different ones over. That time we got... Cecil, the card, and if I can flip it, I got another E. So now is where the memory comes in, because if you remember, on my last turn, or when, when I was the other person, I flipped over an E already, and so then the next player, if they remember where that is, they'll be able to get a match. So I think I remember there was an E right here, and there is an E right here. So I got a match. I would take that and keep it. Here's where there's a couple variations. You can either just go right on and have the next player go their turn, or you can play that the person who got a match gets to go again. Totally up to you. You can either just go back and forth, or you can play where the person who gets a match goes again. One other note, you can match any combination so you can match two E's together, or uh, let's find an Elena. Let me find one real fast. Oh no, where is she? <laughs> um, I had these mixed up, good. All right, I have an Elena. I could also match E to her, or I could match two of the friend cards together. So there's different options for how you match them. Any of them are correct. You're just looking for two that match. As you keep learning new friends, we'll replay some of these games with the new friends added in so they might get a little bit more challenging.